Guys, guess what? It's time to spring into something delicious with HelloFresh. Every week, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and recipes mm. delivered right to your door. So, get 16 free meals plus three gifts with code VALLEYCAST16 at HelloFresh.com slash VALLEYCAST16. It's delicious. Go to HelloFresh.com slash VALLEYCAST16 and use code VALLEYCAST16 to get 16 free meals plus three free gifts gifts. It's delicious! Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes, I think it starts with your uh, uh, show. Hey guys! Uh, hey, hey guys, welcome once again to what we call the Valley Cast. Dun, 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 dun. Um, guys, do you ever, like, hey, welcome to the show. Elliot's here, Joe's here, we're having Hello. a great time. It's, uh, you know, we're, this one's going up a little late, I think, but, you know, whatever. We'll figure it out. And when you guys hear it, I think you enjoy it. I've heard I good think, feedback. Yeah. But look, yeah. Put us in your ears. Let us massage yeah. your, your innards. People have really enjoyed the show lately. We've been kind of a little, we've been a little looser and maybe a little bit, um, I don't know, Loose whatever. I, I don't I don't know. I really Loosey don't Loosey, wacky but pants. People have been coming to the, to the live streams and saying that they've, been enjoying the Valley Cast lately, and I think that's really sweet and nice. That's great. Oh, we appreciate really nice. your feedback. Thank you. Thank um, you. Do you guys uh, are do you guys think about the bees? No, I never think about the at bees. all unless I see a bee, uh, which is pretty pretty frequently. But yeah, I don't sit by myself and think about the bees. No, do you? Do you well, I just was thinking about the bees today because it's like, uh, what was I reading? I was reading. I guess this kind of in, this covers all Insectopia, right? Or okay. the whole the whole uh, kind of like uh, rock we live on. They call planet Earth. Mm. And uh, I was reading about how our vegetables and our crops are losing their they're, nutritional. Yeah, diet. they're weak ass. Our our vegetables and our fruit are weak ass now. Are are weakening as our as our planet plummets through space <laughs> as, as we <laughs> as we rush through the cosmos. <laughs> but the thing is, is uh, you know, it's uh, it's interesting because there was this thing that said grasshoppers are effectively starving to death because um, even though they have enough food the food is not providing them with enough nutrients anymore. So we might lose grasshoppers kind of soon. <laughs> Fine. I'm and not going to lie. I'm not a fan of grasshoppers. Listen, I, I, I could honestly, if you were to ask an uneducated man as myself, what, 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 how do I feel about grasshoppers? I'd say they're cute. They're adorable. I could take them or leave them. I used to run around romping in my backyard through the dry thrush and grass behind my abode and we would catch grasshoppers and there were many fond memories of doing such things however i will say when you would catch a grasshopper and their little spiny legs would run rub on your skin it's weird it's weird <laughs> not a fan was very foreign feeling and scary but I don't yeah. want grasshoppers to go, man. Little freaks of nature. I love them. <laughs> well, you know, we when when you when you're when you think about it, you're like, whatever. We can lose some grasshoppers. I don't give a fuck. Like, hey, look, I barely see grasshoppers anyway, right? But the scary part is, and when I was bringing up bees, I kind of it, the reason why I was thinking of bees is because I was thinking of grasshoppers, and then I was thinking of the nutrients in our uh, crops. Um, going away. I was thinking if we were to lose ugh, grasshoppers, that would be a very devastating blow to the ecosystem. And it would be a devastating blow to um, the food chain. And grasshopper lovers are all around. Yeah. And, yes. and, and, it, and it's scary. Nature is indeed a delicate balancing act that uh, affecting one thing or losing one thing affects many others. But Isn't that I don't crazy? like how high they hop. Yeah, and the, and if you've ever held one in your hands, like a cup, uh -uh. have no, you ever cupped? You. Joe, have you cupped one into your hands like this? Dude, I cup a hopper all the time. Let you me you tell cup you, a cup hop? a hopper? <laughs> Dude, you want to go hop cupping? <laughs> 
Me and my pals, we go, oh, Get in the car. <laughs> come on, boys. Get in the car, which means you're old enough to drive. We're going to go cup of hop, 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 chip a cow. You're old and... enough to drive. <laughs> and Poke rock, a chicken. No, and rock looking. Remember rock looking? Let's go. Oh, yeah, dude, just look looking. at rocks. <laughs> Let's well, go. If you're, if you're out of creek, you're doing a little creek splashing. And then after you creek splash, you just sit down and you look at a rock. You rock, you rock look. look. And rock look. You guys, <laughs> You guys, did, when you did that, did you ever go tree seeing? Yeah, oh, tree seeing. Man. That's a good dude. one. Woo. Dude. And most people would want to go home after that, but after a good tree seeing, I had to do some bush slapping. And oh, you got to do some bush slapping. If there were pines, yeah. you'd do pine sighting. Yep. Pine yep. Sighting. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to lie, when I go hiking, I do a little dirt hurting. Oh, you know? yeah. Just, I love a uh, dirt hurt. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what like, uh, yeah, I love to go look at look at rocks and shit. But when I was a kid, you know, before that we had fucking games on our phones and shit, we would we our our iPhone game our uh, our Flappy Bird was catching a grasshopper in your hand, and then letting it like do that jump around thing inside your hand, <laughs> and you would feel the the power of this you would beast. feel yeah. the life feel it jump like its jump was so aggressive you could like feel it in your palm you'd be like ah, i feel it jump is crazy that was our iphone when we were kids yeah cup yeah. a uh, hop cupping a uh, cup of hop <laughs> cup of hop, <laughs> <laughs> cup of hop. <laughs> i love it um so you know, um, so you read one of those sad articles that says that the grasshoppers like, <laughs> are dying, the bees are dying. You ask yeah, but, us if we see bees, but uh, it made me, it made, but, but forget, forget about that kind of doom and gloom and stuff. It kind of made me okay. think a little, a, a little bit about, um, how like interesting, like, and you know, these are things you kind of think of, these are high thoughts and highfalutin young, thoughts, okay. highfalutin thoughts and book learned thought. thoughts. But do you guys <laughs> well, ever they're think high about polluting thoughts? <laughs> indeed. Ah. But do you guys ever think about how, like, when they talk about how fragile our ecosystem is and how, like, if we were to lose one species of bugs, it would devastate the food chain and things like that? Do you ever think about how, like, how much of an absolute coincidence it is that our, our like, fragile ecosystem is truly as fragile as we think it is and as they say it is, and yet here we are, a... As some would say, a, a mathematical impossibility, the existence of consciousness and our ecosystem. Do you guys think that that's interesting? <laughs> what a lead up. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was in a debate? <laughs> I want to do a show. Chris well, Farley, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. Remember that do you scene remember you that? Remember, remember that scene you were, when he's interviewing like actors? Yeah. Do, remember do you remember scene? the ecology and how the bugs losing the losing the bugs is bad? That's you guys crazy. think that's interesting? So <laughs> you know what is? Have you guys ever heard the discussion? Like, there's always just been like the Ugh, fuck humans side of everything. Mm. Which, yeah, sure. Um, but when we say like anything in the food chain, if it were to go from the mosquito up to the glorious tiger, I'd, like it would have like horrible. Like, but what if like humans just disappeared? Does that just mean everything flourishes? Yeah, I know. So, like, so... <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, yes, yes. When <laughs> first, you know what? When mm -mm. no. No. All right, Elliot, what do you got, man? Listen. <laughs> no, guys, no. hang on. No. Hold on. <clears throat> hold all, on. No. Uh, excuse me. Um, uh, first of all, no. Uh, <laughs> when, when, uh, not if, when the rapture happens, uh, <laughs> there, there will be countless dogs and cats just in the homes. There will be cows in the pastures that can't get out. There will be pigs in the barn that can't get fed, and there will be well, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a little hit at the start, but then everything <laughs> else is gonna rebound. <laughs> I think that yeah, domesticated yeah. domesticated animals and livestock will be fucked, but wild animals will go on. Remember, yeah. they were all wild before they were d domesticated. You know what I was thinking of the other day. <laughs> 
No. I was thinking about how. No. First of all, no. No. Actually, Elliot, can I just say something? First of all, amazing. Uh, you're right. When the rapture happens, um, the, the domesticated animals will be will be boned for sure. What if the well, rapture is just a big end of the world rap show? <laughs> <laughs> like, they should. They should. Oh! <laughs> God comes down. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm a god. <laughs> like the, uh, I like the idea of the biblical scholars being like, ooh, we figured out something about. They, there was a mistranslation of the word rapture. It is it, a hip hop. It's going to be a hip hop. It's just festival. a big concert, dude. And then, uh, and then, okay, so, so like, the, that's the end of the movie, right? And then God comes down. And he just, he busts some fat lines what do they call those he didn't do cocaine <laughs> he did oh. lines. he did cocaine and then he did he's spitting work what do they call it spitting rhymes i'm sure cool. <laughs> you um, are i spitting grew up bars spin bars that god's down to spitting bars and they're like holy shit the rapture is about rap that's crazy and then some scientist bursts through the scene and goes wait we were wrong again it's not the rapture. It's not the rap. Sure. It's the raptor. And this giant raptor comes out, a dinosaur a velociraptor. <laughs> yeah. And just Ending everything. destroys everything. And then the, the, the movie's over. No, I'm going to take a step back. We're going to go back to the concert rapture. It's a big hip hop show. <laughs> but like God, God is coming down. He's flanked by the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit's coming down. He's flanked by the father. And the son. Oh, uh, hell yeah. And they're like the Beastie Boys, and they're just doing it. And every time nice. the, the, the father and the son finish the end of a rap line with him, you know, in unison, like the Beastie Boys, people's heads explode. Yeah. It's like, da, 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 Every time they point, heads explode. Yeah. <laughs> like the Beastie Boys hit, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn. That's good. It seems like it'd be really cool to watch. Yeah, it'd so, be real fun. So the other day I was thinking about how <laughs> I grew up in the U.S. in in the Western. Congratulations! Part. Thank you. Truly, they say there's a genetic lottery. I think there's a geographic lottery, and I think we we won that at least. If we didn't win the genetic one, there certainly is a geographic lottery. That's a good concept. I, I appreciate that. I was thinking about that the other day, and so I was thinking. We're so blessed to live here. It's awesome. But I was thinking about how our the the government, the culture, the the you know whatever the social zeitgeist presented us with horses uh, in throughout co our entire Western culture. I As, love that the government presented us with horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of that tax rebate. <laughs> every 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 representation of a horse uh, in like cult in our culture has it shows us that it's like a an animal that you ride on it's a pack animal and my whole life i've watched cartoons where you're riding on horses and it just seems so yeah. it's so programmed in my brain that when i see a horse i'm like look at that car that's an animal <laughs> you know yeah like i don't see an animal i see a vehicle and i was thinking about how fucked up that is because i was thinking if the if humans left the earth like we were saying would the earth survive and be better off and i was thinking at least horses could stop being cars <laughs> <laughs> and then i was thinking isn't that a fucking crazy concept that these things were just in the wild and someone was like yo i bet we can ride those fucking things yeah. <laughs> well, what's crazy to think is that there there's it's not as many as there used to be of course but there are still are wild horses oh totally are, yeah um, and wild a, cows Mm -hmm. There's yeah. an island in and uh, wild hogs. <clears throat> That's Allen. true. Uh, <laughs> in Flathead Lake in Montana, it's this big freshwater lake. It uh, there's a big island in it. And it's called Wild Horse Island, and there's still no way horses that run it's free. Called Wild Horse Island. Yes, is sir. It an, it's an island. It is. It's an island right in the middle an of the lake. Island Joe. of wild horses. Yes, sir. Joe. If you're just going to come on the podcast and make shit up, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's going to go well. Well, Ellie, Wild then, Horse <laughs> Island is a great, and you're allowed to go to Wild Horse Island, but you do not go to the next island, which is Murder Cow Island. <laughs> Murder Cow Island, <laughs> stay the hell away from. <laughs> what about Unreasonably Angry Raccoon Island? <laughs> oh, you think it's going to be fun, but oh, they have I, really I'm the creepy mayor. human hands. Uh, <laughs> Elliot knows all about it. Welcome. Elliot, what's going on in your raccoon chronicles? Pair, it's 
all I was out of town right before I left. Raccoon pops out, says hello. The moment I get back, I walk out there. I hear them fighting. They're everywhere. They surround me. I'm at one with them. They're at one with me. We talk to each other. We know each other. We have a good rapport going on. Uh, they give me my space, I give them their space, and that's just called cohabitation, baby. Whoa, so you wow. guys have now, you've gone from cartoon rivalry yeah. to, to harmonious. To, no, 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 to Elliot realized he can't do a damn thing about it and he just has to <laughs> live with it. Oh, so the raccoons won. It's not, <laughs> there's it's not an understanding one, at all, they won. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. And there's one thing I could do. <laughs> And I don't think they've done any crimes justifying the one thing that I. Oh uh, yeah, sure, sure. Which is obviously, you know, to fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what court of law administers that sentence? <laughs> They're like, we think yeah. killing them is unethical. Although. <laughs> that said, we the that jury. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. we, we don't believe in the death penalty here. <laughs> what if that's what happened in the but court of law on. with humans? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what if it finally got to a nightmare future where they're like, the death penalty is really harsh for criminals. With that said. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, no, I'm. Uh, there's nothing I can do about the raccoons and they're they don't tear up the grass because they've already done that so it's just kind of like and i kind of think they're really cute i get excited when they're i see cute. them uh and they chill out a lot so it's not bad it's they're not little, like the bees they're little so, they're little hands they're little yeah little, he, almost human hands. hands and you see them hands reach out and they'll grab a little grab stuff thing little, dude oh, let me even, let me just tell stare you. at me I went to Idlewild and there was this guy that was like rehabilitating raccoons in his like yes. realtor shop and this is what you do in, in raccoon Iowa. realty you have a, <laughs> you have a lot of uh you have a lot of like people who have, wear a lot of hats in Idlewild. wild you know you get the carpenter also is the painter is also the mechanic i mean so that guy, guy seems like he would be that guy i was expecting you to say like the carpenter is also the lawyer and the painter is well, also yeah, the police yeah, chief that, but you're like a, yeah. the guy that you expect to do all those things he do he does all those things up in Iowa wild yeah yeah so the guy with his the name's big... Aaron Massey go check him out <laughs> yeah that basically yeah that described most men they, they, they can do carpentry and fix their car but um this guy was a realtor who was rehabilitating raccoons and so he had this uh, cage in the, inside the front office of his realty office and there were a bunch of raccoons in there and he would let you come in and like you know they'd reach their little hands out through the cage and you can like you know let them grab your little hand and and then you give them and little, then fuck them and then you can fuck them yeah because <laughs> he doesn't believe in the death penalty yeah. He doesn't believe in killing them. <laughs> so, but with that said, <laughs> but no, he would give you little marshmallows and you could give them like, and they, they're little yeah. hands. They did grab a marshmallow and then, yeah, dude, cute as fuck. You know how like Instagram, there's a lot of good uh, pet accounts that you can follow and animal accounts. Oh, some endless. Of the, some of the, the I don't want to say best because it's it's a uh, it's a uh, moral ambiguity of what you what side of the line you stand on. But like a lot of them are people raising exotic animals. Um, yeah. And I follow some like rehabilitation. Uh oh. This lady oh. raises like seventeen foxes and chronicles oh. their journey. Yeah. Oh, still got me. Hello. I follow Hello. some. Hello. I follow Hello. some okay, foxes. Uh, Juniper. Juniper. Yeah. yeah I follow Juniper, Juniper so, Fox. She's an animal rehabilitator, but oh, like her, I, her account like focuses on foxes and it's really cute. And like my daughter is, is a Fox fanatic and wants a Fox for a pet. And I'm like, no, never like mm -mm. I'm watching that account specifically. And I'm like, yeah, they're cute. But also I don't ever see them not being uh, a little crazy, but then I also follow some raccoon rehabilit rehabilitators <laughs> and the ones that like get them like borderline domesticated. I'm like, maybe I could get a raccoon. I know, man. Maybe I, I, I could no. get a raccoon. Dude, and here's the thing. This is the problem with those things. They're totally doing that to children and going like, I want a raccoon. I want a fox. I want a tiger, a, a fucking puma, whatever. Like, Did you say a butt fucking puma? I want a butt fucking puma. <laughs> 
because it doesn't Dude, believe draw in the, the line. <laughs> but no, but like you know, we, we have all these. They're accounts. almost extinct. We have all these. They don't accounts. know how to procreate correctly. <laughs> we gotta help. We've them. got two butt fucking pumas left in the wild. We gotta bring them in. <laughs> we gotta get them to stop <laughs> butt fucking so they can procreate. <laughs> They can't. They, it is a male and a female, but they won't stop butt fucking. <laughs> we show them videos, so many videos. We've helped them, and they don't get it. Straight back to the butt. But no, like uh, <laughs> the, most of those accounts are people that you, like you said, Joe. They're rehabilitating these animals. They're like For the most part. They're yeah. like doctors or something, or they're zoologists, like Elliot was going to be or was for a time. Am. Am. Still. <laughs> yeah. How's it going with the raccoons? Mm. I love it. You're like, we cohabitate. No, they beat. They won. And, <laughs> I, won. and I, I have bowed down to their demands. They yep. want a ripped up lawn. And they <laughs> <laughs> And they never let me put the lid on the trash. <laughs> yep. And uh, sometimes if uh, someone's leaving at night or if I walk out between the, the office and the house, they just scare the crap out of me. And uh, yeah. Uh, they would have glowing hair. eyes in the light. Like the wing. Yeah. 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 Uh, it would be scary as fuck to suddenly have this big giant thing rustling in the bushes and you're like, huge. God. And you're like, fuck, man. God and damn our, it. The the hedge out on the, the porch is like so thick, but they're right there. Like they're right <laughs> behind it. But I can't see them because of how thick the hedge is. But you so hear like, them. I'm trying to yeah, and I can hear them perfectly. And I can hear them talk to each other. And go, <laughs> Like that, that's how they Ooh, talk. That was a good raccoon. That was that great. Was very yeah. good. You had some well, I've time heard to, him a lot. <laughs> you had some time <laughs> to work on your. Have you tried to communicate with them? All the time, yeah. You, do you say, do you speak in English? Only yeah, Espanol. I, I speak, I speak in the... French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do, do you, have you tried to Sometimes speak to I them? Sometimes I try to communicate psychically. And, and does that work? Um, no, occasionally it does with the hummingbirds and the butterflies, but I've yet to to get the powers up to mammal level yet. Dude, I think I've got a summer hobby planned. You guys ever do a summer hobby or like a summer project? And you're like, yes. this is going to be my summer project. Yes, no. it's been a while, but I, I It's I been would a while goals. for me too, but it's nice to do that. It's healthy. It's setting goals for yourself, establishes other types of goals, and it's always a good habit to get into and also keeps you kind of, you know, busy instead of just like staring at the wall that has um, scuff marks on it and masturbating to that and finding that second. erotic enough to masturbate to. Hold on a second. Tell me more about this wall. Uh, well, it's a scuffed up wall. Nope. I've lived here for like seven years. And so, nope. it's, you know, who cleans the walls? You know, <laughs> nope. do you guys clean your walls? So anyway, uh, I was thinking about a summer project and Elliot, you talking about hummingbirds. Summer Remind project me. sounds like a band name. Some summer shit project. Like, it yeah, totally does. Early 2000s fucking pop punk band. there's a lot of haze and hose from the background people yeah. while, like with to the beat yeah. hey so uh so i was thinking of a summer project and i was thinking i love hummingbirds elliot you see a lot of them over there yeah i love them i love them so much I've always loved hummingbirds. They're just so fascinating, beautiful little creatures, and they're just these cute little things, and they're like- so Heart's always about to explode. Oh, Great. heart's always yep. about to explode. Oh, and I can but relate. But, but see, their heart's about to explode is our version of being chill and calm somehow. Yeah. And that's yeah. so fascinating, and their wings are so fast, and they, they can like hover in the air, and they fucking do that really Wait. cool thing. Is your summer project to make a hummingbird feeder, but put a little bit of cocaine in it? Absolutely, and see what happens. <laughs> uh, they might time think? travel. They might. <laughs> what if you gave them all? What if you? This is insane. But what if you did that, and then all these hummingbirds came to your feeder, and were taking all this cocaine, and then they started stabbing each other. <laughs> No, yeah. no, no. Even better. They all go out into the sky like drones. You know how drones can all do synchronized? <laughs> and they all go into like a big like circle shape and like a Stargate thing like opens up. <laughs> you can and then this see giant hummingbird comes through. <laughs> they just spell out the word cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I would love yeah. this giant hummingbird to come through, and then it's like they've been waiting for to be able to reopen the portal to let through the king hummingbird. 
And uh, anyway, but uh, okay, so my summer project, because uh, I do see some hummingbirds, and I'm, I'm going to do some research. And, hummingbirds. You know, <laughs> hummingbirds, very good. Nice. I, uh, nice. I, I do see hummingbirds around my area, but I need to do some research and make sure if this is even possible. But I want to attract them to my balcony so I can fuck them. Thank you for watching the Valley Cast, and uh, we'll do some ads right now. Um, okay, bye bye. <laughs> Dude, let's do the ads, <laughs> then I'll tell you what my real project is. <laughs> All right, you want to hit that stamps? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me do it. Where am I pulling it from? Oh, I have it here. Um. Hey guys, welcome to the ad portion of the show. Isn't that fun? Just comes right on you. Oh, let's talk, let me tell you. You know what, guys? How about this, really quick during the ad portion here can let's talk about how important it is to save money where you can especially yes, in today's economy yes yeah tell me about it if you've got a small business inflation isn't doing you any favors right now it's harder no. than ever nope. to stay profitable you guys yes. know what we're talking about uh, if you're looking for ways to cut costs mailing and shipping is a great place to start you simply use stamps.com to mail and ship and get access to exclusive discounts and great rates on shipping from usps and ups it's an easy way to keep more money in your pocket mm, money in my pocket nice. like must money be in my pocket, in my pocket. Yeah, here's here, let me tell you guys this. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. And for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. And Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right to your computer. That's where you can wear your underwear and no one thinks it's weird. And you can get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. How about That's that? a lot of percent. So guys, why don't you start mailing and shipping with stamps.com and keep more money in your pocket every single day. Mm. You sign up with the promo code ValleyCast, that's V-A-L-L-E-Y-C-A-S-T, all one word, for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. You just go to stamps.com, you click the microphone at the top of the page, and you enter that code ValleyCast. Thank you, you so much. Stamps. Oh, thank, you. Oh. thank you, Stamps. Steve, I'm glad you uh, brought up spring because speaking of spring, why why does why does Christmas only got to be a winter thing? Why can't uh, yeah. every month have a little bit of Christmas? You know yeah. what I'm talking about? I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, that was That's my lead into what I will read now, which is this spring revamp your <laughs> daily routine with Bespoke Post. Whoa! And their new seasonal lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses like us. Hmm and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. Elliot, you do bespoke posts. Remember when we got that big old sword? Big knife. <laughs> yeah. I remember us talking about the big knife. That was awesome. We could like clear small twigs and branches as we traversed the earth. There's other boxes like every the Every guy Weekender. wants a big knife, let's be honest. And you can get the uh, a ni many knives. You can get the Terra box, which is a knife that is made by Bare Bones based in Salt Lake City. But then there's also the Weekender box, which is a, a Weekender features a metal hardware reinforced frame and quality leather straps for your traveling. There's a bunch of stuffs from, from, like we said, knives, but also more casual things like shirts and clothes. I got a great jacket in a box. Jacket in a box. Uh, Elliot, what have you got from it? Oh, I got um, a bunch of, like, wood to burn, and I got a bunch of really amazing... Oh, there's this uh, thing called Grown Alchemist that's soap and lotion. It's absolutely incredible. It's the best-smelling stuff in the world, and I couldn't be a bigger fan. Bam. As you can see, no matter what you have going on this season, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear... It's like hot sauce and barbecue rubs, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. So to get started, take the quiz... Yeah, learn a little bit about yourself at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, and each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. That's like getting free stuff. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting small business. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up and coming brand, and that's really cool. So it's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 
Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code VALLEYCAST at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code VALLEYCAST for 20% off your first box, boxofawesome.com, code <laughs> Valley cast. And I was reading the thing, so I missed the joke. What did Elliot do? <laughs> we, no. we were passing. <laughs> You're passing notes. We were pa- Here, let's show Joe right now. What we're Steve, it's Bespoke. your turn to take it. Oh, yeah, let me take that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we were doing it pretty well. I think like, uh, we did great. I think we did great. Look like it. It, it if you like that visual a gag, go to youtube.com slash the valley folk to watch this in beautiful Ugh. eye cast. Not just audio cast, but eye nice. cast. That's right. Great job, uh, Joe. So what are you Good talking job, about, Joe. Steve? Job, You're Steve. talking about hummingbirds. Hummingbirds. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So, okay. We're done. Ads are done? Yep. Okay. So. Ding. Want- ads are done. Ding. Would- ads are done. <laughs> I got to run. <laughs> That's not an okay thing. Um, but uh, so the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the so I want to attract hummingbirds, and I want them to feel safe. You want to my... make a hummingbird sanctuary? I want a hummingbird shank sanctuary. <laughs> You're gonna stab I'm gonna the stab birds. The... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stab. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have a sanctuary for hummingbirds, and to, so that I can, because you've if seen, there is not a seen. prison or correctional facility in the United States where the inmates haven't like collectively called and lovingly called some dark corner of the complex, the sanctuary. <laughs> I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Dude, you don't want to end up It's a sacred in- place. You don't- it's, uh, <laughs> be careful. And when they shank say you, you're going to go in much. there, you no, say no shanks. <laughs> no shanks. <laughs> when you're hey, in, hey, you no, no shanks. shanks. No shanks. <laughs> Please, no shanks. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, there's plenty of types of hummingbird feeders you can get. Most of them are red, which attract the hummingbirds. However, right. there are people who are very into hummingbirds. That so if that's you post what I'm about saying. hummingbirds on your Instagram story, you will get a lot of feedback. Sometimes not always the kindest because people really, really get into to hummingbird stuff. So you're going to want to make your own uh, nectar and you're going to want to keep up with it because it can cause problems if they start developing a habit of coming to your sanctu- your sanctuary Ooh, yeah, and yes. if you de- if they end up losing the food they won't know what to do and it can actually cause problems. if you get them hooked Whoa. on your juice you have to continue to supply the so, juice so because i because yep. i am i am uh for all intents and purposes acting as like a little flower meadow for them like a little mm-hmm. like i am essentially your mother bird and you're uh, feeding them from your teat right yeah. and and they and don't they have like um Kind of like bees have this like crazy geolocation kind of like yeah. processes where they can tell each other where the like nectar is and they oh. tell their friends and shit. I don't know. You might have educated me or lied to me. Definitely yeah. bees have that. Uh, that's pretty cool. I would uh, also say if you do it on your back pa- balcony, you should put some decals or stickers on your windows because they can not realize it. Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't want that. So so obviously when I say this is going to be a summer project, it sounds like I'm going to need to do my DD, which we say, which we call the due diligence. Dungeons and I'm going to look into this. And, you know, I don't want to just get any old nectar. Because it could be bad for them. And I want to look into the safest possible ways to do this and to keep them safe and happy and healthy because it is a sensitive ecosystem that I don't really want to fuck with. But my ultimate goal, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, is to have them chill in my hand. I've seen it. It seems magical. It seems so magical. And they put their little feeties on on your tippy tips and they'll put their little feeties here on your fingies. And and that would be a magical experience, don't you think? I I agree. You know, I had a similar but not the same experience when again I'm trying to psychically communicate with certain uh, animals as much as possible. And it reminded me of you, Steve, because I know you've done this before, but I was trying to to communicate with this butterfly that was flying around. Beautiful yeah. black yellow butterfly. And I managed to to ask it to land on my hand and it did it twice and it was very exciting in the the second time it just sat there and i got so excited that i went oh and i scared the crap out of it and it went away it fell over and died yeah and it fell over and died um (laughs) and then i ate it and then i ate it (laughs) (laughs) because it was dead already (laughs) 
No, let you nothing go, go to waste. waste. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Waste not want not. I want not. Just <laughs> any time you do that in front of a kid, <laughs> like at a park, <laughs> this beautiful butterfly lands on you. You just go. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know those zoo? Those, like, I think at the history museum they have like a, a butterfly sanctuary where you can like hang out and they fly all around you and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, yeah. You just went in there and started picking them up. Off the- it's like you're in one <laughs> of those like <laughs> cash grabbing machines. <laughs> you got like wings yeah. hanging out of your mouth, and they're like, "Excuse me, sir," and you're like, "No, no you, you cannot do that. What are you doing? Are you?" Oh, you oh, they're oh, stuck sorry. in that- your pocket. You're shoving them. <laughs> I'm not there without a lock. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is this is not an all you can eat one? I went, I went to one in Arizona. I thought that's what this was. I thought they were like the biscuits. <laughs> Steve, I think hummingbird, hum- hummingbird sanctuary is a noble pursuit. I think you should do it. I, I will also pursue my bird dream then this summer, inspired by you. I want to make a crow and or a raven my friend. Dude, Joe, I'm so there with you, man. And I want to work my way up to that. Because that... Can I... <sighs> yeah, go ahead. It just... I don't think, I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast. There is a, a trend that I was noticing with these crows. Who, and I have no problem with the crows. They're highly intelligent. Great birds. Very no smart, okay. turns out. Super problem smart. solvers. I was noticing that in the sky the uh, hawks would be flying and then the crows would come up and just beat the crap out of <laughs> yeah. the hawks. Whoa. And the hawks didn't do anything, but I thought, well, I'm sure the hawk must have done something to deserve this. And then one day I saw a hawk and it was sitting up in the tree. And again, out of nowhere, a crow came and just nailed it. And just in the crow, and the hawk doesn't fight back. It doesn't do anything. It just waits for the crow to stop bullying it. And then I Googled Whoa. it, and it turns out that crows do bully hawks all the time. They bully Whoa. hawks. Interesting. They don't I, want them to be I, in the so area. They feel threatened by them. Some and kind so of they rivalry. Just, yeah. The bully hawks and the hawks high don't school really rivals. fight back. Avian rivalry. Is that a cool yeah. band name, too? Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, it's a few years Bully later, hawks. Bully um, Hawks is a cool name for a sports team. Yeah, it's like my high school rival. Here come the Joe, bully, f- the bully Hawks. Bully Hawks, that's nice. Joe, how are you going to do this? What's your plan? So apparently, what you do is that you find a, ho- a, a hawk, uh, a crow. <laughs> you find, find a hawk, hawk for you them bait to the bully. crow in. <laughs> the and then crows you, will just find them. The bully legend, them. <laughs> legend says if a crow sees you punch a hawk, he'll be your best friend forever. <laughs> Dude, I actually really quickly before we move on from the bullying crows, I love that that the hawks have learned what humans have learned about bullying, which is just to kind of ignore it and it'll go away. (laughs) Okay, just get get it over with. I love that. The hawks are pretty smart too. (laughs) One crow flies in with a locker, another one comes in, shoves him in. (laughs) And they're holding (laughs) one flies in with a toilet, the other one dunks it into it, and then they fly (laughs) off. See you next week. Uh, um, no, what you do is that you find one that's in like your vicinity that might like hang out in your backyard or whatever, and you start putting out like trinkets for it. You put yeah. little um, prizes, little shiny objects, and it will find and see that you're doing it, and it will start to bring shiny objects and trinkets back to no you. No way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. And you know what, dude? I was looking on, I can't remember where I found it, but someone found a crow box. Well, I don't know if that's what it was called, but I that's what I remember it being called. And it was basically just this big old wooden box that had like a little hole at the top and then like a, a like a tray. And when, and basically you could train a crow to bring a trinket and put it into the hole and then the tray would open up and give them a trinket and then they would fly away and it, and then you could go open the box and look at all the trinkets the crows brought you and it was basically like a like a friend machine for crows <laughs> you know it's like essentially what you're saying joe but it was a machine built for it's that like a, rather it's than like just a, an arcade machine yeah yeah exactly yeah, for, for <laughs> just like yeah. a like, like a, a claw, claw machine. game yeah holy crap speaking of real quick yeah, a tangent that doesn't even matter, but I've never, I, it's unbelievable, it happened. Heather came home one day and she's like, guess what I want at the arcade? She went to the arcade with Hayden for two seconds. I was like, oh, you must've hit the jackpot. You got like 7,000 tickets or something. Yeah. She goes, nope. And she holds up a brand new pair of AirPods. And I'm like, what the hell? 
And she's like, I did it. I won that one thing where you press the the thing that goes and forward the key and has to goes fit through the, the thing. She did it. Like on the second try. That does who does that? That's impossible. Apparently Dude. it's possible. She did it. Is Anyways. Heather a fucking claw game pro? No. Yeah. But she, she did that. <laughs> but have you seen her try other times? Yes. So this is the first time in 45 years that she's actually won. Yeah. Joe's like, I cannot emphasize how much of a fluke this was and not Dude, at all related un- unbelievable. to Unbelievable. I didn't talent. think it was possible. So, Air, so uh, she really got some cool. fucking AirPods. Yeah, brand new. Damn. Great. That's awesome. That's the coolest thing I think I've heard anyone I know win from a machine like that. I I've never heard I've never heard like it. it. Exactly. Yeah. I've seen like myself or some like other person get like the cool thing in the claw game. Never yeah. electronic, but like the stuffed animal we wanted. Yeah. Or the Tootsie Roll. <laughs> but yeah. never, never that. So, was, Joe. Never are something you... of actual <clears throat> value. Yeah. So, Joe, well. you see crows in your area? You see crows a lot? There are. There's a lot around here. But so, we also have like a lot of those like lovebirds. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the ones yeah. The that ones that like, like go. Brrr, brrr, the ones and they, that like... there's always two together. And. Yeah. They yeah. uh, they make they're always a, a fucking, bunch of but they make fucking. a bunch of nests around us and then uh, their eggs fall out constantly. Ooh, so it's sad. It's fun. Bad. It's That's fun bad. and sad. Maybe they should uh, <clears throat> smarten make up and build nests. their fucking nest somewhere better. That's right. Uh, Joe, I hope. So, are you really gonna try this for the summer, or are you gonna are you gonna? I like, would. I would. You just want to. I want to. I want. To. Yeah. Do you, uh, well, do you I'm need gonna trinkets. Do you need to load up on some trinkets? I'll just oh, steal. we got trinkets. Look, I, uh, my wife's got rings and necklaces that. Yeah, I've and use like even paper years. clips and stuff. <laughs> like old. She's sleeping. Office. Take some off of her fingers. Was she sleeping? Put like, put like a forty dollar bill, a forty dollar bill out there. Yeah, old yeah. coins, doubloons that I've been collecting. I'll just throw them out. Um, <clears throat> but I will say, my goal is to have a video or a picture of a little hummingbird on my hand, and that's my that's my goal. That's my summer goal. I like that goal. You can it's do a it, sweet man. Goal. Yeah, I think so too. I really want to do it, and I think I got that sweet soul for animals. Like I got some Disney princess shit going on inside. I think a little bit of it is that you got to have the right mentality. A little bit of Disney princess. The, yeah, a little Disney princess little vibe yeah, mm-hmm. off of you. Um, mm-hmm. all right. We all well, have that, guys. I w- I'm going to give you two choices here, so choose wisely. Okay. Unless you guys have something else that you want to bring up, I have I have a way to. Uh, transition us out of the show. Now, ugh, things have been steadily moving on the Twitch, uh, Valley Folk Twitch account. <laughs> wow. That's really good. That's fun. What do you look, That's- do you look like? I don't know. Get closer. Get closer to the camera. <laughs> oh, you look like a some sort of a like a like I don't know, but it's, strip character. Yeah, it's good. It's a good look. It's a good <laughs> There's the tongue. There he goes. <laughs> Let's see those teeth. <laughs> So things have been moving on the Twitch account, and uh, mm. r- recently an, a guy named Duncan, I can't remember his last name, has, has started making us these graphics and these cool like things for me to play with. And so I've been um, fucking around with some really fun new stuff on the Twitch channel. So I can show you guys that on the way out, or we can do just a good old fashioned would you rather, or we could do both. Oh. <laughs> Dealer's choice, Elliot. Go. You're the dealer. Uh, let's do one would you rather and see one of the graphics. I love that. Man, That's great. Look at you. Next Making executive stuff. decisions here. Love it. Okay, this is great. I didn't even know we were going to talk about this. But this is so great. Uh, okay. It's so interesting that this is what it is. But I thought we would really love this would you rather. Joe and Elliot. Would you rather now this is a world where your current lifestyle does not exist. So you're not married, Joe. You're not engaged, Elliot. This is just you, a free spirit in this world that doesn't exist. Yes. Would you rather 
have a 100 plus crow army for life or marry your celebrity crush for life. Now here's, here's where we're at. Option one, you will acquire a 100 plus crow army that'll follow any command you wish. You want them to steal money from random people in the streets? Your wish is granted. Hate someone that did you wrong? Your crows will make their life hell and shit on them or throw pebbles at them or even peck that person to death. Possibilities are endless. You will have to feed them is the downside. No one will ever know you are in charge of them. Option this, two. Uh, an American crow, Steve? I, I, You know, I think you can choose. I'm assuming it's an American crow. Okay, good to know. Option two, your new significant other is your celebrity crush. You'll be married to them for life. It's true love. It is true love. Okay, you're, so that's You're good. happy, and that's about it. It's 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 true love. It's, it's true love. It's reciprocated. It's reciprocated true love. Well, Elliot, I want to give you this fun fact. Crow, typical American crow, lifespan is only seven to eight, seven years. To eight years. Whoa. Yes. <gasps> wow, Joe. Damn. That's a part of the equation that is not talked about here yeah is are the are the crows replaced is there sort of like, like well it does say for life kind of so quota. maybe it's a magical army that that doesn't die joe hold on i'm gonna look up the average lifespan of a celebrity <laughs> <laughs> make sure you look in the past 10 years because <laughs> it was different back in the 50s and 60s and shit <laughs> hold on dude people. that's <clears throat> This is cool. What if when you die, the army just like it like circles your grave like forever? Yeah. Like they're just like there forever. Like whoa, you know, I, no one never, no one so, knew. According to Google, <clears throat> the answer to the question, "How long does the average celebrity live?" says the study looked at one thousand New York Times obituaries from two thousand nine to two thousand eleven. Those who gained some kind of fame died at seventy seven point two years of age on average. This is compared to the average lifespan of the U.S. of 78.5 years for creative types and 81.7 for professionals and 83 for business leaders so and you're politicians. So you get at, at least 70 good years, maybe 80. Well, you're not going from birth, but let's say you're going to get them until they're at least 70 or 80. Yeah, I'm gonna go the true the true love route. If it's true love and we're uh, we're lo we're digging it and it's it's perfect and great, yeah, man. Um, I would do. I'd like to do fifty crow army and marry a C lister. That's great. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. I like that. I think I'd take the crow army because you know what? I think I'll still. I think I'm meant for true love. And I think that when it is meant to happen, it will happen naturally. I don't need magic to force it. And it would be wonderful to be with the, my celebrity crush for life. And it would be real true love. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I do. But we don't know much about these celebrities. And I would love to get to know someone before I am in love with them for the rest of my life. And Well, that's why I asked the true love thing. If it was just like somebody well, I'm you sure were curving on, you get married. Love. That's different. I'm sure it becomes true love. All I'm saying but, is that if you got a hundred crows and a crow army, you're gonna have a very specific type of human that you're gonna have to fall in love with. Yep. <laughs> well, but it says here that no one will ever know I'm in charge of these crows. I could just be a guy that like likes crows and like that's cool. That I get my big titty goth queen to love me because those girls love crows. Is big titty goth queen a uh, B side of a queen <laughs> album? <laughs> Uh, I think I'm taking the crow army because I think that's pretty cool. It because is pretty imagine cool. 100 plus crows. I would be a vigilante. I'd call myself the crows so the that crow I don't get fellow. into any copyright problems with the crow. I'm He's the, the crow bro. No, the crows. You've heard of crypt bro crypto bros. I'm crow bro. Crypto crows. <laughs> Crow bro. <laughs> Crowbar is my name. <laughs> You're just like, a drunk in control of crows. <laughs> and I have a bar called the Crowbar. <laughs> and my cr like my most trusted crow, he has like a missing eye. He like hangs out on my shoulder all the time. Yeah. And, and when you're I always wanna... waiting. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. No, when I want to command them, I just go what I whisper, whisper to him and he goes to tell the rest of the crows. And you're always waiting to move into your new home, but the problem is, over and over again, the funds 
have just remained, unfortunately, in, in uh, the uh, Save the escrow. Life. Save the yeah! He said it! He said it! <laughs> He said that thing. That no, that was pretty. That was pretty big. That, Elliot was doing uh, an impersonation of a Mexican asking, "Is that your crow?" <laughs> es crow. Es crow. Es crow. <laughs> nice. You es get crow? it, Steve. I do, right. I do more than any of you. All right. Well, then, guys, we've we've selected our would you rather. It's time to say goodbye. But before we do. I want to show you what's going on really quick on the Twitch channel. And, uh, you know, no big deal. Everything's fine, right? God dang it. <laughs> so we got some cool, cool, cool stuff going on. Ah, uh, there he is. We got some... <laughs> You're just messing with layers. <laughs> so, at one point, we want to visualize the skeleton. Um, and I think the direction comes real soon here. Hang on. Are those hands? Nope. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Got him. We're having fun. We're having you, got the hot, you got the hot dog hands. <laughs> Body expanded. Filling the universe. So, so we we this is into like madness. watching the the ring video, but instead of Samara showing up after seven days, some dude named Jake just moves into your apartment and never leaves. Hey, I'm part of this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of your life now, dude. Look at this shit. So it goes on for quite a bit. And We're then, 18 minutes in. Hang on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. I didn't want to miss some good stuff here. Hang please, on. please, 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 please help me. Please, 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 help me. Please, 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 Oh yeah, we get into the art of scarf styling. Yeah, this is good. This is good. You I guys don't. like this? Did you guys watch this? Oh. And then and then Whoa. and then the show Whoa. starts, but check this out. This is how I start the show, and then you're gonna you guys are gonna see these new graphics. Ha! Ah. Uh. <laughs> this is very you catchy. Made it to the other side of the rainbow, boys. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. Who is that? Coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. From the Valley Folk pee pee bucket, the pee pee hole. There's a pee pee hole. This is just you alone in your place. And that's where I am. Doing I'm it. Pissed on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is me all alone in my in my fortress of weirdness. I got piss all over me, boys. Going into just playing Elden Ring. Like it's got <laughs> nothing to do with playing Elden Ring. Yeah. I got piss. I'm covered in piss. So and then we got Batman. Batman shows up. Someone was looking at my star charts and I didn't like it, so I got kind of upset. All up in my charts. I got real mad about it. So is that That's graphic? That's illegal. <laughs> That's illegal. I'm Batman. Effective. <laughs> you heard him. 
So and then there's a so wait, there's a, somebody made you this VW charts. bug yeah. van graphic. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. Isn't it awesome? And really uh you know, Elliot can move around in there too. Like hang on, I got Thank some you. I did some moments where Elliot was scared. It's fucking hot in here. <laughs> can't fucking see the road. <laughs> can't fucking see the road. Just can't see the road. <laughs> it's it's can't madness. The road. It's just madness. <laughs> Elliot doesn't feel good. <laughs> It's unbelievable. So well, look, Ellie gets scared, and I puppet him like a little puppet. Look. So you guys, uh, you guys want to play some Fortnite? <laughs> it's like Andy Mogren. <laughs> I can see. I can see yeah. now. You're right. It is like Andy Mogren stuff. Yeah. Which, by the way, I can uh, see world. now. Did you? Uh, what are you did, doing? You saw Andy's news? Oh uh, yeah, yeah terrid- pterodactyl. Yeah, that- yeah, made Comedy it into shorts. the Los Angeles uh, Dude, film festival. I was like, you got to nice. come. And he's like, it's digital. But I guess there's some other in-person thing that's going to happen soon that we all got to go to, I think. Elliot, you pretty cool. to me? unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting how you could do a buddy show a co-host and all by yourself yeah yeah and everyone loves it they're like we love that elliot is here and they're like oh yeah elliot's here <laughs> and then and then we play Fortnite. Yep. Oh, oh man anyway Good stuff. guys thanks for watching guys I'm, I'm glad that you i got to show you some of the madness going on on the on the uh the twitch channel twitch.tv slash the valley folk folk if you guys want to check it out do it. Amen. In the meantime, link in the description. Go pick yourself up a copy of Movie Movie Game. Yeah, or it's uh, expansions. Expansion. Get them while we got them. People them are very up. happy. They're tweeting about it, getting reviews. Yet to get mission, a bad. Games. Yeah. Yet yet to get a bad um, uh, thought about the game, which is really nice. And if you have got it, go to Board Game Geek and give us a little review there. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great, great idea. idea. And people have been streaming themselves playing the game, Joe? Uh, yeah, some of our former uh, SourceFed friends uh, streamed it and played it. And it was very nice. That's cool, man. I love that. Love that. Well, Elliot, um, I, I'm glad you're I, good with your raccoons. Yeah, I am. I, mean, I got a question for you guys. Hey, who am I? Alright, goodbye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye.